Solo Squad has always been a proving ground for the best players to see just how many kills they could find in one match. Ever since Fortnite's release, it's been one of the most fun competitive modes to watch, especially recently, now that it's gotten harder and harder to get those high kill games. But there's many players who we've seen getting some crazy amounts of kills. They pretty much are known for solo squatting, and they haven't let up since they first began. For real, they've been putting up 30 bombs for months now. Considering what Epic's been doing recently, it's almost like they don't want people playing solo squads. The loot pool and the removal of siphons certainly don't help, and well, you won't solo squad a team of mechs. Even though it might seem damn near impossible to even wipe one squad, there's a lot of little techniques and strategies that you can use to play like these players, so let's watch them in action. Before we get started, Pro Guides has a small announcement to make. We're adding a ton of new features to our site, which include 1. Exclusive guide videos for our pro members every single day, 2. Pro Pass now grants access to all games, such as League of Legends, Smash Brothers, CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member, so head on over to Pro Guides by clicking the link in the description below. But in this guide, we'll be taking it chronologically through the order of the game, so we'll start with the drop and end with end game techniques. Let's get right into it. Alright, so I'm not going to sugarcoat this. The drop is mostly RNG. You can get pretty unlucky with your drop, but there's some things that you can do to make your chances just a little bit better. Now, this is something that needs to be stressed. The drop isn't as important as you think. Of course, you still have to land at a POI for a high kill game, and you'll have to be quick. If it looks like you're not going to make it to the gun first, then just bail and find the next best spot. Sharp, a godly solo squatter, ended up dropping 40 kills this game, and just look at the drop he started with. First off, try to figure out how to make your drop perfect. Even though it's not that important, it gives you a starting advantage. In Tifu's classic 36 kill solo squad game, he starts the game off strong by landing on top of the most contested building in all of Tilted. Even though the OG Tilted might not be there anymore, it's a really good example of a good landing. I know I said the drop didn't matter, but this is a good example of what a good drop can do for you. Not only does he get a quick kill, but he also has a really solid starting positioning. This is when it gets fun, although it's also probably the most intense part of the game. In this section of the game, it's important to kill people one by one. Since every teammate in a squad will probably be close together, that makes it even more important to isolate them. Unless you get a lucky play, it's really tough to defend against another squad at once. Replays lands in Paradise Palms, a very hectic place to land. We know only one thing is on his mind, a 40 bomb. As Replays lands, he doesn't take a contested drop. Why? He knows landing in a house with 3 or 4 other players is a sure way to die. Unless they're complete bots of course. His loadout is solid, with an AR and some shields, enough to get a kill or two. Notice that he makes sure to get some shield before pushing. Replay sees an easy kill and claims it with a few whiffs of Zayar. He now has a shotgun, some mats, and is ready to roll. He makes sure to cover up as he hears footsteps, and this isn't accidental. He wants to gauge out the situation before going in. He doesn't hear any shooting, he wants to wait for the right moment. If you're the first one to engage, more enemies are likely to intervene. Replays gets a nice angle and hears multiple opponents around him, so he pre-edits the ramp to see if he can get an easy kill. After deciding to rush inside, he sees an opponent and nails him with a 150 headshot. But wait, he just gave away his location. Replays makes a smart move and places a ramp, and he waits for somebody to take the bait. But uh oh, he manages to scuff his shots and is forced onto the defensive. He takes a moment to heal and reevaluate his strategy. Never be afraid to reset a fight if needed. Now, here is where Replays messes up big time. He takes too long searching for his trap and gets his wall replaced. He's also in a tough spot because his enemy places a ramp inside his 1x1. In this situation, Replays should have easily died, but he didn't because his enemy made an even bigger mistake. Instead of right hand peeking, the enemy rushes into his box and gets outgunned. As Replays charges another opponent, he's quick to shut the enemy down with some cones. This is a great strategy to use against lesser opponents since they don't expect it. He follows up with a sick Tifu classic. This enemy is in a state of panic, so Replays capitalizes on that and does an edit down to finish the kill. Even though most of his enemies happen to be on their own, it should still give you a good idea on how to fight against multiple opponents. Number one, wait patiently for the right moment to strike. Number two, be quick to isolate and track opponents. And number three, be confident. Solo versus squatting usually consists of several lesser skilled opponents, so many high skill tricks work like a charm. Okay, here's another really important piece of advice. Heal. Just because you're trying to go for a high kill game doesn't mean you don't have time to heal. Watch any solo squad's gameplay. When they get hurt, they heal. Now, when we talk about the mid game, it's arguably one of the most important. Why? Because that's where most of the kills are secured. And let's be real here, people don't play the mid game in solo squads to win. They want high kill games. 
replays is off to hunt some more targets with a solid loadout, a combat AR, minis, and impulse grenades. He's got all the essentials. This move is debatable. Replays knows his enemies aren't very good because most players in solo squads are here for fun or to get high kill games. So a move like this in a normal game would have been tremendously risky. Replays goes for a wall replace, but can't seem to take it. He hears the enemies outside approaching, so he gets a better angle. This is exactly what you have to deal with when you don't get the kill on time. Getting endlessly sprayed is not fun to deal with. So next time this happens, quickly get a better position so you don't run into what he did. Luckily, Replays has impulse grenades and uses them to get out of that fight. As an enemy pushes him, he manages to nail him with a sick shot and covers himself just in time. The Art of Surprise is a super underrated tactic in Fortnite. Replays knows these enemies aren't messing around. After he heals up, he impulses for height. Now this fight is his to control. Side note, impulses are a great way to take height and get into people's one by ones. He locates the enemy and gets a wall replace, but right as he edits in, he places a ramp to block off the opponent. Many high level players use this exact strategy you see here. He then edits his ramp for a quick finish. The last opponent is wandering and replays plays aggressively against him. In solo squads, playing aggressive when needed is very important. Playing too passive could get you killed. So now on to takeaways. Number one, although Replays made a mistake charging into that building, he proactively strategized and got himself out of that situation. Number two, he applied necessary aggression when needed. Once you commit, don't surrender. At this point, you'd probably be sweating. I definitely would be. Try to keep your calm. We all know that lots of our games have been lost because we just can't aim with shaky hands. Anyway, since Endgame usually takes place inside a smaller zone, that makes it really important to keep away from multiple squads. It's really easy to get sucked towards a squad and end up getting spammed by their entire arsenal of explosives and SMGs just to go get targeted by yet another squad. That's a death sentence. While it may be tempting to play more aggressively so you can get more kills, you really need to play this part smart. During the endgame, the AR is your best friend. It's a great weapon to secure kills from a distance and stay disengaged while a team is getting shots off. Now, this situation is inevitable, so you need to know how to handle it. Let's watch Sharp play out this situation and dominate these opponents. He's in a really bad spot. He ends up getting shot out, and he's faced with the squad right in front of him, each equipped with their own godly loadout. What does he do here? He builds up right away. The only thing a pro player would do when outnumbered. It's like an instinct to get high ground quickly. You can see that's exactly what he does, and it pays off nicely. Let's watch him pop off and slay this squad. He played that so, so well. Now, two things I like to point out here are as follows. First, he went for high ground. He makes sure to pressure right away. He also doesn't focus for too long on one opponent. This is a key element for solo squatting. You can't tunnel vision, otherwise the teammate will be able to take you out. Second, he does exactly what you need to do when outnumbered. Isolate and secure the kills quickly. Giving the enemies too much time will allow them to locate and focus you, so take these tips to heart. You can tell that he plays an endgame with much more urgency, because he knows that he'll soon be targeted by the other teams. Now let's take a look at a few things that are super essential to a solo squads game. The loadout. A good loadout is necessary in solo squads. You need all the advantages you can get, and having better guns gives you a higher chance of landing fatal shots. The ideal loadout for solo squads is different than solos. While a bolty may be decent in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's basically useless against a squad. The best guns to have for solo squads are pretty much combats, RPGs, scars, and heavy snipers. Let me break down why. Combats are a great all-around weapon. Not only do they allow you to get super easy chip shots, but their fast fire rate makes it easier to hit multiple opponents quickly. Scars are the best all-around weapon. They can deal with enemies at mid to far range, and also work super well at close range due to their accurate hip fire. If you can find one of these, that's a massive bonus. RPGs are okay at dealing damage to enemies, but they're great at taking down builds. If you have a squad rushing towards you, one RPG shot can take down at least a few of the players. Heavy snipers are great for applying pressure. If you need to kill someone who's turbo building in a box, a heavy sniper will basically work 100% of the time. Snipe the wall, replace, edit, shot, boom, you're golden. Keep in mind, you should absolutely always reserve at least one spot for healing, if not two. Carry items that can give you quick HP like minis and bandages over things that take a while to use like chugs and medkits so you can heal yourself mid-fight. To thirst or not to thirst. We've said in some of our past videos that you should always go for the thirst. That may have been a good idea a few months ago, but for some reason, Epic took out Siphon. So there's basically no point. Most squad members get way more aggressive and risky when their teammate is downed, so you can use that to your advantage. Overpeaks are a classic mistake of the overaggressive player, which gives you the perfect time to capitalize on that. It really depends on what type of squad you're playing, so take this with a grain of salt. Normally, when playing a sweaty squad, it's smart to thirst right away, or withstand a relentless dose of W-keying. 
Solo Squads is undeniably one of the most fun ways to play Fortnite. It's been getting tougher and tougher, but you can still manage to get high kill games if you play it right. The great thing about squads is how it all lines up. When you get the perfect mix of a nice drop, loadout, and bad players, it all comes together for that one high kill win. And boy, is that satisfying. In fact, it really all comes down to how you handle each individual player. So let's wrap it up right here. This is what you guys need to know. Get as low of a drop as possible. Don't be afraid to spend time healing. Rotate to the middle of the map. Isolate opponents one by one. Get high ground right away in most scenarios. Did these tips help you guys become better solo squad players, or do you guys have any more suggestions? Comment down below and let us know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much guys, see you around.